In the previous video, we covered combinations, probability, and many interesting examples, and in addition to subsets. In this video, we're going to be covering casework, the fundamental type of problem that comes on the AMC-10. So casework is just splitting a problem into multiple cases. It's better said as an example, so let's see this AMC-12 problem. A fancy bed and breakfast inn has five rooms, each with a distinctive color-coded to occur. And they're just saying this to tell you that they're not the same room, they're different. So it doesn't matter whether one person stays in one room versus another. One day, five friends arrive to spend the night. There are no other guests, and the friends can room in any combination they wish, but no more than two friends per room. So either one or two per room, or zero. In how many ways can the innkeeper assign the guests to the room? So, how can we approach this problem and split it into cases somehow so we can use casework? Well, remember, it can be one or two friends per room. So, let's first, a good habit is to write out what your cases are before you actually start evaluating them. The first case is they all have their own room. Second case is maybe two of them are in the same room, three people still have their own room, and one, one room has no people in it. Now, the third case is that we have two, pe two rooms with two people each, and then there's just one person left who occupies their own room. Zero, zero. And can we have three rooms with two people? No, because there's just five people total. So these are the only three cases. So now let's take a look and, let, and we'll, we'll look at each of these cases separately and count the number of ways for which it's possible. Okay, so starting off with the first case, they all have their own room. How many ways are there for this? There's five rooms, there's five factorial, there's five people, so there's five factorial ways to arrange them. Okay, that was one of the easier cases. The second case, three people have their own room, two people are in one room, and zero people are in one room. So first, remember, the order does matter. We're not just assuming that the first three rooms have one per people in them. So we have to account for the order in which we do this. We have five choices for which room has two people in them, four choices for which room has nobody in them. And then from there, the remaining three rooms will just go to people who have exactly one person. Okay, so now that we've decided which rooms have two people and which rooms have one people, we have to choose which people will stay in the room with two people in them. That's just five, choose two out of the five people. We choose two of them. And now, is there anything else we have to multiply for? Basically, because there are five friends, there's, we have to also multiply by an additional three factorial because the three remaining people have to occupy the three rooms with one person in them. So just three factorial ways to place them in, just like we did in the first case here. And we can evaluate that to be 20 times 10 times 6, which is 1,200. Now this is the final case. And now we have two people, two rooms with two people in them. So like earlier, let's, let's choose two of these rooms to have two people in them. I have two, two ways to do that. Now there's three rooms left. Let's pick one of them to have one person because these are the three rooms left. So we pick one of them to have one person and two of them will have nobody in them, right? So now we've picked which rooms will have two people and which rooms will have one, pe one person. Now, now, how many ways, how can we assign the friends to the rooms? We choose two people from the five to be in the first room. And then after that, we can choose another two people to be in the second room with two people in them. And then after that, after that, we now have one person left who just automatically goes in the room with one person in them. Okay, so we can evaluate this to be equal to 900. 
because it's 10 times 3 times 3 times 10, which is 900. And be careful here, because the reason we have to choose 5 choose 2 for the first room and 3 choose 2 from the second room, and we don't divide by 2, is because these two rooms are different. Even though they both have two people in them, they still, they're still different rooms. So it does matter which, which two people we choose to be in the first of these two rooms and the second of these two rooms. And now we just add them up. 900 plus 1200 plus 120 is 2220, final answer. So just to summarize, we break it into three cases. One where five rooms with one people, three rooms with one people, one room with two people, two rooms with two people, one room with one person. And then we just break it down into cases. We said, how many ways are there to pick which rooms have two or one or zero people? And then we multiply that by how many ways are there to pick which people go into which rooms? And we add them up, we get our answer. It's very standard case or pattern that we'll now see how to use in another. Example, we have a farmer's rectangular field and it's partitioned into a two by two grid of four rectangular sections, as shown in the figure below. In each section, the farmer will plant one crop, corn, wheat, soybeans, or potatoes. The farmer does not want to grow corn and wheat in any two sections that share a border and does not want to grow soybeans and potatoes in any two sections that share a border. And we're asked to find, given these restrictions, how many ways can the farmer choose crops? Now, this is a standard casework problem, and generally the main difficulty in casework problems is figuring out how to break up the problem into cases. And now in this problem, there are many ways as there are in many other problems. But one way to think about it is, let's first assume that, let's first see how many ways are there for this first top corner right here. We can see that there are four choices for this top left. The reason there's four choices is because it can be any of the corn, wheat, soybeans, or potatoes. Now, for the sake of all of these cases, we'll just assume, we'll just assume that it's going to be corn and we'll just multiply by four at the end. The reason we can do this is because the, in this case, the problem is symmetric because corn and wheat can't be together and soybeans and potatoes can't be together. So each crop has one other crop that it can't be next to and the other cups it, it can be next to. So it's all symmetric, but that's not always the case. So don't, don't jump to conclusions necessarily. Okay, now let's look at assuming corn is the top left corner, the cases that exist. So what we'll do here is we'll look at the cases for these two squares. So the first case we'll look at is what if these are both corn? Corn, corn. How many choices do we have for the fourth square? Well, if three of them are corn, this square cannot be wheat because corn and wheat cannot be together. Remember the problem statement? But it can be soybeans, potatoes, or even corn. So in this case, we have three choices, just three. Okay, case two. In case two, let's say we have just like the other cases, corn in the top left corner. Now, now in this case, let's say that we have no corns in the in these two squares. So these are just going to be soybeans or potatoes, right? Because there can't be wheat in any of those two squares, any of these two squares. No wheat is allowed based on our condition. So soybeans or potatoes. Now let's say they're both soybeans. If they're both soybean, then how many choices for this square? Potatoes? Nope. Not allowed. Right? Remember the problem statement? Potatoes not allowed. But soybeans is allowed, corn is allowed, and wheat is allowed. So we again have three choices. Now, what if we replace these soybeans and instead we have two potatoes? So we have potato here and potato here. Now this square cannot be soybeans because soybeans and potatoes are not next to each other. So it can be potatoes, corn, or wheat. So another three choices. So just two times three, which is six in this case, right? Because both cases are the same. Okay, now let's look at the third case. So in the third case, we again assume corn is here. And this time, let's say that 
we have one corn in one of these two squares. So what if this one corn is here? Then this square can be soybeans or potatoes, right? So let's say that it's soybeans for now. We'll account for the other case later. If this one is soybeans over here, then how many choices do we have for the fourth for the fourth square or rectangle? It can't be wheat because corn and wheat can't be next to each other. And it can't be potatoes because of soybean and potatoes being next to each other. So it can only be coin, corn or soybean. Two choices. Now, what about if what, we can also flip corn and soybeans? So we can flip these two squares and then you can put corn here and soybeans here. So then we multiply by an additional factor of two. Now, like I said earlier, what if it's potatoes instead? Let's erase this here and consider what if now it's corn here and potatoes here. Now this cannot be soybean because soybean and potatoes are, can't be next to each other and also can't be wheat because of the corn. So it can be corn or potatoes. So again, two choices. And similarly, just like the other case, we can flip corn and potatoes and we can just make it corn potatoes. So times two for that, because all cases that we found earlier are just multiplied by two. This is a total of eight. Okay. So now we've covered the cases where there's two corns in the, in these two squares. We've covered the case where there's one corn in these two squares and we've covered the case where there's two potatoes or two soybeans in these squares. Now, what if there's one potato and then one soybean? Potato, soybean. How many ways for this case? Well, let's take a look at how many choices we have for the bottom right square. It can't be soybeans because soybean can't be next to a potato. It can't be potato because potato can't be next to a soybean and it can be corn or wheat. So it really has two choices. And then we'll multiply by an additional factor of two because we can flip, we can flip soybeans from here to here and potatoes from here to here. So we can just flip the locations of soybeans and potatoes. And when we do that, we, we end up with the same two choices here because the soybeans and potatoes are still both adjacent. So just two times two equals four. Now let's add all these cases up. We have Three plus eight plus six plus four equals 21. And remember, we have to multiply by four because we assumed corn was in this in the square. So it can be corn, wheat, potatoes, or soybeans. So 21 times four equals 84. And this time we have Azar and Carl playing a game of tic-tac-toe. Azar places an, an X in one of the boxes in a three by three. So Azar, X, and then Carl, O, places an O in one of the remaining boxes. After that, Azar places an X in one of the remaining boxes, and so on, until either all the boxes are filled, or one of the players has the symbols in a row, horizontal, vertical, or diagonal. Whichever comes first, in which, in that, which case the player wins the game. And we're saying that suppose the players make their rooms at random. So they're basically just choosing randomly. They're not following any strategy. And that Carl wins the game when he places his third O. So this is the main point of the problem. Carl wins when he places his third O. And we have to find how many ways can it look when the game is over with this condition I underlined in blue here. Let me draw a three by three grid. So, in, in, in this problem here, let's consider the different cases that Carl can win in. Carl can have three O's in a line like this. Or Carl can have three O's in a diagonal like this. So let's tackle each of these cases separately because then we can find the overall solution at the end. Okay, so the first case, three O's in the middle. 
if you have three O's in the middle, remember, X goes first. Azar goes first and he puts X's. So if X goes first and Carl wins, there must have already been three X's before Carl. So three X's before Carl, you can put three X's anywhere we'd like. Now the only thing we have to make sure of is that Azar doesn't win before Carl, because then Carl won't be winning the game. So first of all, how many choices are there for Azar's X's? Well, there's six remaining spots after the three O's are placed. And from them, we must choose three of them. So six, choose three. Now, the real question, do all of these work? No, actually. The reason being, if a czar plays three X's, before Carl has a chance to play the O, a czar would be winning, not Carl. So this is becoming a little bit tricky. How do we subtract off those cases that a czar wins in? If there's three O's in the middle, then we can, a czar can win by placing the three X's in the left column or the right column. So just minus two. And actually, we'll see something similar. If, a, if um, Carl wins by having vertical or in the middle, even in the middle. So for example, even if Carl has three O's in the middle like this, there's still six choose three ways to choose three spots for the X's and minus two, because you can't have, you can't have the rows of X's on either side. And same thing if let's say the O's are on an edge like this. Now, again, same thing. There's six choose three place for the X's, except the X's cannot line up like this or like this, so you subtract two. So basically all of the cases with three consecutive O's in a line or six choose three minus it's six choose three minus two. So how many ways are there to have three O's in a line? Well, this is just three vertical, and also we have three horizontal. This is just going to be times six, which is six choose three is six times five times four divided by six, which is twenty. So six times twenty minus two is six times eighteen or one hundred and eight. Now the second case is Carl wins diagonally. Now, well, in this case, there are only two cases. You can have this diagonal or this diagonal. So there's just two, two cases to win in this case. And in this case, where can Azar place the X's? Well, again, like earlier, there's six places and six slots for the X's. So we just choose three of them for the X's that Azar can place them in. and Let's check again. Are there any cases where Azar wins by placing these three X's? As you can see here, there's no available, there's no available lines of rows or columns without there being an O in, in interfering somewhere. Like all the rows, all of the columns, they all have an O in them. Even the diagonals, this diagonal and even the other diagonal, they both have O's in them. So luckily, we don't have to subtract for anything here. So just two times six choose three equals 40. The answer, the sum of them, 148. And that is how many ways the board can look after the game is over. Okay, so next we're gonna talk about complementary counting. Complementary counting is basically looking at what you don't wanna find and then subtracting it off. It's very useful because sometimes it can simplify complex case or problems. But if you're interested in it, you'll have to check out the next video. Also, by the way, if you're interested in the material I'm using, I'll be sharing it with the subscribers before the AMC 10 and 12. So make sure to subscribe so you can be notified when it will be released.